Glenn is an Aboriginal man. He has taken sick leave from work due to stress and has seen Liz once before. His dad died six months ago in quite tragic circumstances. He had had a stroke in the shopping mall and lay on the ground for a couple of hours before anyone realised what had happened. Glenn thinks that if his dad had been a white person, someone would have offered assistance sooner. Hi, Glenn. Would you like to come through? How's your week been? Uh, it hasn't been particularly good. So I remember you saying it was coming up for six months since your dad died. Yeah. I, I, I still get really, really, really angry when I think about it. It's such a big loss to lose your dad and under those circumstances as well. <laughs> the fact that, you know, no one stopped to check. He could have still been alive, you know. Yeah. It just makes me... It just makes me fucking angry. We did everything together. I, I, I wouldn't be here where I am now if it wasn't for him. Yeah. So you guys were close? We were close. Yeah. You came a couple of weeks ago. You were a bit worried about your drinking and just generally how you were coping. How's it been the last week? I've been drinking a more and more, mm. and it's, you know, it's getting close to that six months. The only way I can seem to deal with it is just to, just to drink. Yeah. Otherwise, I just sit there with this ball of anger and wanting to lash out, and I can't do that. And you're drinking much at home, or mostly when you go out? Drink all the time. Yeah. Home. So every day. I never used to do that before. No, I don't, I'd only drink on the Friday or Saturday night if I went out with my mates. Still catching up with your mates? Yeah, yes, I still catch up with them. And I think I'm even drinking more these days when I go out with them. Glenn was pacing in the waiting room and appeared agitated. He is casually but neatly dressed. He looks down for most of the interview and is fidgeting with his hands. Can you talk to them about how you're feeling, or...? Nah. You can't talk to blokes mm. about this sort of stuff. What about your girlfriend? How's that going? Oh, that's not great. I, a lot of my anger and frustration, I, I, I... I don't mean to, I take it out on her. She says, she says something and I, I snap back for no reason. I'm scared of losing her, but I don't know what to do about it. I, I, I can't seem to stop doing what I'm doing. I, I, I can't afford to lose her after losing my dad. And, yeah. And the job, my dad was so proud of me when I got a, a job with the government. I, I, I can't afford to risk losing that either. I suppose that's why I, I initially Started coming here. In terms of how you're feeling, you feel like it's getting worse or evening out or this week's been a hard week? This one's been hard. Yeah. This one's been particularly hard. Yeah. Mood and affect describes how a client feels, mood, and how he or she presents to the worker, affect. Glenn says he is angry and he appears flat and depressed. And are you sleeping okay? No. No. And that's just a recent thing, not sleeping well. Yeah. Yeah. And does the alcohol help you get to sleep and then you wake up? It does. Yeah. I generally average a six pack a night. Just to help me sleep. Yeah, okay. And, and then on the weekends, with the mates, and it's like that's a different ball game, even altogether. It might be worthwhile talking to the GP about his sleeping. You know, we can do some work on cutting down the drinking, but it might be good to fill the GP in on what's happening. 
as well. It's possible they might have some medication that might help with the sleep, but it will be important not to mix it with too much alcohol. And when you say that you know it's particularly bad, you're feeling particularly low, are you ever feeling so low that you feel that you might hurt yourself or even take your own life? Suicide risk assessment. Liz asked Glenn, has he thought about taking his own life? When assessing risk of suicide, it is important to use clear, concise language. No. I feel angry and want to lash out at people, but there's, you know, it's like, who do you lash out at? You know, I punch the wall occasionally, but no, taking my... Yeah. No. OK, that's good to hear. You know, I can get a sense of how the anger must be around the loss and that there is no one to direct it at. That's what makes it hard. Who do I direct my anger at? It's like, society's fucking screwed. But it's society in general. There's not a, a face, not even a, a government department that I can direct it at. How are you kind of getting through those feelings? I'm struggling with them at the moment. I, I, I know it's, it's, it's like I, I'm, I'm contemplating going back to the boxing gym. OK. I can't think of any other way at the moment. Could um, work out in the old bag. Used to, it's what I used to do in the past. Yeah, so get rid of some of those feelings of being so angry. Mm. And you said helping out in the gym, so helping other people. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, just trying. See, Dad was always really, really good at helping others in the community. So I suppose it's trying to mm. continue on with his work. Yeah, so it's something that you valued about him that gives you a sense of carrying him forward in some way, even though he's not here. Mm. The gym idea sounds really great. Would you like to do a bit of work on cutting your alcohol use down a bit? Um, yeah, yeah, that's... I know I'm drinking way too much. Glenn's insight and judgement are intact. He was able to make the link between his increased alcohol intake and his anger and grief over his father's death. I know it helps me sleep, but it doesn't help with my anger. Does um, it make it worse? It, it, can, it, it can make it worse. And that's what I'm worried about. That's one of my main worries, is that if I continue to drink more and more like I am, that I'll get into a situation which I can't get out of. Yeah. And that is a good insight because, yeah. you know, people lose their inhibitions when they're intoxicated and when you're having strong emotions, it's important if, you know, to keep a lid on them in some way. So for me, just to start looking at, at any sort of reduction. What I'd like to do is give you a drink diary to take home and just keep in your mind, you know, that you are wanting to cut down. And if you can record what you're feeling just before you have a drink and how much you drink. And then if you bring it back next week, we'll have a look at it together and talk about how you went with it. Grief and loss. Many clients who attend AOD counselling are experiencing grief and loss. Glenn is grieving the loss of his father and his grief is made more complex by the circumstances of his father's death. Liz will continue to see Glenn for counselling. You've got a lot going on. You've got the death of your dad. It sounds like your relationship's suffering a bit from, you know, the grief that you're experiencing and the increase in your drinking. Yeah, it's, I, I, can't, I really can't afford, afford to risk losing her and it's like... Dad's not there. And it's... Yeah. So you want to keep your, your relationship, you want to keep your job, and you want to keep the things going that your dad was so proud of you yeah. for. Yeah. And it sounds to me like you've got a plan. So, shall we catch up next week? Yes, please. Okay, great.